this coming Friday, we've got a balance patch. This soon. Friday is a balance patch, and it's Smoggate's chance to change the game, and I'm hoping that they really do throw some crap in there to make the game kind of nutty and insane, right? Because whatever they do this Friday, it won't be in time for RTA season, so they don't have to worry about the balance patch messing with RTA. They can just... Um, they can wild out and try to really shake things up. A lot of people are hoping for a, uh, a buff in this balance patch that's going to impact the collab units. Um, let's talk about that for a minute. What 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 is your guys' opinion on this? What do you guys think of, uh, of our great Lord Einzul Gon? You satisfied with him? You think he is a a great character or just the greatest character? Rob says they did him dirty. Kale Green says Ainz needs a buff. Ignore F Res the Bear Mem. Yeah. The general consensus is that Ainz is not very good, right? I mean, mine's just got some random gear on him. He's not even wearing a set. This is just for the event. This is definitely not a build you should do. I have heard some people are making headway with him in RTA, of all things. I was talking to Valky last night about it, and he insists that even at high-level play, Ainz is sometimes a clutch uh, number five pick. I'm still skeptical. I think you get 15%ed, and this unit does absolutely nothing. I think they could definitely tool him a little bit. I've also heard that um, he is uh, being used in lower abyss, so newer players are getting some value out of him as he's really helping them clear some abyss floors that might have been challenging before with his death penalty does seem to work in Lower Abyss. But uh, the general community sentiment is not good. Oh, and if you guys think this search bar doesn't work, that's because you aren't capitalizing the first letter. If you capitalize the first letter, the search bar works just fine. So, uh, Eins Ulgon, hero rating 2.4. Garbage unit. Restricted by 15%. A lot of people aren't particularly happy about this unit. So much so, right? 2.4 on Eins and 4.2 on Eins. <laughs> people like original Eins better than new Eins. <laughs> oh my god, that's uh, that's sad. So yeah, I really hope. I, I don't care that some people are seeing some level of use in, in him in. RTA. I don't care that some people are seeing some level of use for him in Guild Wars. The um, the free unit has always at least been somewhat usable, right? Uh, it may have taken a buff. It may have taken a little something something, but everybody is excited about this unit and to have it just feel like he falls so flat that he's not really usable for new players because this is a collab's pulling in a lot of new players. I'm getting DMs all the time with questions. Hey, I'm brand new to the game. I came in for Overlord. What do you recommend I do with this? How should I build Ainz? And it feels so bad to say, yeah, you just build them for the event and you'll never use them again. That's not the kind of thing you want to say to people that came here because of the Overlord collab. So I'm really hoping they give my boy a little bit of love here. Now, Albedo, this is kind of a hot topic, right? Everybody has their opinions on Albedo. The general opinion is she's not very good. This is my Albedo build. I went with a somewhat decent speed, very, very tanky uh, counter set version. And I even put Unity set on her just, just to be that guy. Because I like being that guy. <laughs> um, and uh, she's won a couple of fights for me. If somebody tries to cleave you, she is probably one of the best ways to stop cleave. Um, another variant to this is the speed build, and another variant still is the damage build. I gotta tell you, I try. I initially started with destruction set on her. I was running like 280 crit damage and relatively high speed. This build does almost the same damage as the destruction build. I mean, the destruction build does hit harder because of the crit, but the, the destruction doesn't impact the pop damage. The pop damage is proportional to the health. If you can get this build with 100% crit chance and 200% crit damage and still maintain similar bulk, you know, maybe, you know, if you could drop uh, maybe 300 defense and maybe 2000 HP and get to 100% crit chance and 200 crit damage, sure. But I think you're selling this unit short. This, this unit wants 
to be tanky. She wants to survive and not get killed. People aren't realizing how good 20% damage reduction is. You know how impossible it is to kill a 30k HP unit with 20% damage mitigation? You put this unit on a team and uh, say the enemy picks Galililius and Galililius normally does 30k damage with her S3. She's going to do, what is that now? 20% less, 24k damage. 24k damage doesn't kill any decent built tank in this game. Just, just by existing on the team, she turns off Galililius. Genua, everybody's crying about how awful Genua is. Now, the one thing I don't have is some effect resistance and that's just a failing of my gear. I'm not sure I'm willing to dedicate the gear I need to get a build like this with some effect resistance on her because uh, you don't want her defense broken or she is a little easier to kill. She is not a great unit, but she's not a bad unit. Does she need a buff? I'm scared of what would happen if we buff this unit. What happens if we buff this unit? Ark says she's mid, she's not mid. She's really good. She's boring. She is boring as hell to play. And I think people aren't mad because she's not good. I think people are mad because she's not fun. There's nothing fun about playing this unit. Karina was fun. Karina could blow shit up. Karina hit something and it evaporated. And then everything else got hurt. This unit, everything else gets more hurt, but she doesn't blow up anything in one hit. I mean, not really. Not like Karina does. She's not a tank buster. Um, but she's a better Crimson Armin for mitigation, right? Crimson Armin only mitigates 15%. Now, given Crimson Armin is... Um, her mitigation is, uh, uh, um, you know, unchecked. It's on any kind of damage, whereas um, Albedo is just mitigating crit damage. But let's be honest, crit damage is usually what you're trying to mitigate in this game. It, hell, it's um, Adamant Shield is only 16%. So she is one of the best, if not the best, mitigation knights in the game. And she can do some damage. She is not like Karina, who doesn't mitigate a damn thing and blows things up. She's not like Fallen Cecilia, where she's a ton of mitigation and doesn't really do damage. She's kind of like a hybrid between the two, where she brings some damage and she's a fantastic mitigate. And if you try to cleave into her, you, 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 can't, you can't easily cleave into this unit. I've tried, I've, I've successfully cleaved this unit maybe one out of three attempts. So I think she's better than people give her credit for. I think she could afford to have some tweaks. It'd be nice to see Bicorn proc instead of as a counter, have it proc as an extra turn. This was a, an idea that Valky put forward. That would make her a little bit more usable in tank down that would make her a little bit more usable into Flitica style cleaves it would give her a little more utility but I think anything beyond that people are like oh her damage feels so awful you know maybe they could raise her bicorn damage just a titch but uh if they give her too much she'll be a great disaster I mean, you, re you guys want another Karina you really want another Karina in this game you you you, you want another great disaster I, I I'm I'm not so sure I think the biggest issue with this unit is they demoed her. They showed her in the Epic 7 demo, and they showed her critting every single thing she hit, and p doing pop damage and killing units, and they really kind of sold her as a damage-dealing unit. They sold her as a, a Last Rider Crow, as a Karena, as a, as a, this is a DPS knight, and people got excited. Everybody gets excited for DPS units. And I don't think they intentionally baited us, Celestial, but Celestial, Celestial, I'm going to call you Celeste. Um, I don't think they intentionally baited us, but we got baited. Uh, we, 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 we thought, here comes an aggro unit. Here comes an a, a tanky aggro unit. She can mitigate. She'll blow up some stuff. And then we got her numbers. We're like, oh, she ain't blowing crap up. This is terrible for damage. So much so that that's why I think you just stick with the high HP. Um, Sue actually did a really, really deep dive video on this. Um... I've got it here somewhere. And uh, if you want to check out the numbers. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, the first first thing when you search Albedo, buff needed. <laughs> it's like, 
A lot of people really feel this unit needs a buff. Here it is, here it is. If you, um... That was terrifying. If you guys want to see the numbers, check out this video. He does a really good job of breaking down how, um... How the HP build is almost as much damage as the, uh, as the crit build. And with the crit build, you get bulk and tankiness. Now, if you can pull off the bulk and you know, the tankiness, the bulk and the speed, and if you want effectiveness in ER, you can pull off all the stats and still get some crit damage on there. Yeah, of course it's more damage, duh. But it's not so much more damage. I think Sue calculated it out to being like 80 to 85% difference. You know, 80 to 85% lower damage just, and you can do so much more with this build if you totally ditch crit chance and crit damage. It opens up so much more gear to doing things in this game. So I, I do not like the damage build on her, though some are still married on it. I would like to see them do a little something something with Albedo to expand her scope, right? But it's gotta be super frickin' minor. They've got to barely touch it, and, and people aren't going to like it. They're going to say, well, you didn't address her damage at all. Well, you didn't make her, you know, you didn't give her 25 more speed and, and, and greater defense buff. They're, they're going to be upset that she isn't made so broken that you can't play this game any way but with Albedo, and I don't want to see that. I don't want to see this unit just destroy the game. So hopefully they touch her a little bit. So, I mean, do we look at her score? What What's her... What's her uh, review right now? Good God, she's almost as bad as Ainz. She can destroy me instead. And look at this. Definitely a bad unit. Pretty bad. Dommy mommy step on me. <laughs> yeah, I like that one. Um, buffer, please. She really needs a buff. I don't think people know what they're asking for here. I, th I think... She will go from a usable niche spot to the, the game just being damn near unplayable while she's on the field. They got to be really, really, really careful balancing this unit and buffing this unit. But hey, maybe she will be part of Friday's balance patch. It's what the community wants. The community overall seems to think she needs a buff. The really high-end players, the, the people who know what the hell they're doing in RTA, the people who are playing this game at a highest level, are all terrified of what would happen if she gets a buff. Albedo can destroy all Mushurans. Absolutely gorgeous unit. I wouldn't like to be in Smogate's shoes right now. They're caught between a rock and a hard place of the community is demanding something be done with this unit and knowing that if they do something with this unit, it could very easily break their game and not only do they not nerf, they will never nerf a collab unit. Are you kidding me? So I don't know. We'll see how Albedo sizes up and what, what if anything, they do this Friday for the balance patch.